in this period, in the early 70s, you decided to choose the turntable as your instrument. Why did you choose this instrument over any other thing to, to express yourself musically? Because from the turntable and what you put on the turntable with the vinyl, and what was coming off the vinyls of different styles of music mm -hmm. that send out its frequency to hit many soul people, because indigenous black people or the indigenous moors always have soul. Yeah. And they could feel the vibration of what was happening in the music. The way that you played, the way that you laid it down in those days, and the thing that I found revolutionary about that was that you wasn't shy to jump from, like you just said, rock and roll, obscure rock and roll, to the most funky James Brown track. Now, did anybody, was that an influence or was that just something that came out of you? Was it like a natural expression? Well, strongly an influence, especially to give honor, honor to my mother and, and family that being open-minded and knowing so much music. Mm -hmm. Like she bought the first 200 records, I bought the next thousands. Okay. And, um, uh, one of the first records I think they bought was Too Many Fish in the Sea by the Marvelettes. And um, we was heavy into the Motown and the Volt Stack sound. Yeah. And the James Brown slide and all that sound that was happening at the time. And we also was into uh, African music by Mama Africa herself, mm -hmm. Marion Makiba. When the, the b-boy and the hip-hop culture started evolving, you could just throw in whatever you wanted sound-wise and they would react to it as long as it was the intention of what you played, not necessarily what you played. Well, it was the beats that drew the b-boys and the b-girls crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then you had to look for the obscure beats in your soul records or jazz or funk or rock records, even your African rhythms um, to play for the b-boys and the b-girls. And all that really started strongly with James Brown came out with Get On the Get, get on the Good Foot. Yeah. You know, the King of Soul was going down at that time. He could have like five records in the top ten at one time, especially on the WWRL sheet or the soul sheet that was happening at the time in the yeah. music. And then when you decided to, to form the, the Universal Zulu Nation, how early was that in the evolution of the, the DJ culture? When you thought that the B-Boys and the whole hip-hop culture needs to be unified under one? 1973s and 74. But we started DJing with the one turntables in 1970. That's when we just put on the music and let it play and, and take, take it, it off. And <laughs> it off. Or you might have that disc where you put five or six discs on the, um, the turntable and they would with go the back with the arm and yeah. swings back itself and drops the next um, disc. Yeah. Or you could try to play with it when we used to set up two sides of the room when we used to give things like in the old center when one person would come with their component set, yeah. another one would come with theirs, and um, you know you had the flashlight, you knew when a certain song was going off, for the next one to put on, that's before we had all the two turntables, the mixer and the board and the, the, the smoke machines and all that. <laughs> so so that's this is actually, the, this was actually a human crossfader. It was a, a two DJs, mm -hmm. a flashlight, and two able DJs who could react when that guy's ready. Right, you, you go open that the needle won't swing back when you <laughs> try to help get it on and you know, you could take the spindle out and put the one disc. Yeah. Or you could leave the spindle in and play the six or seven records that it hold to yeah. drop the records. Wow. So sometimes you might have mistakes where, you know, you're trying to keep the music going, but just sometimes it still was a little claws in and out because you couldn't get the needle back there quick because it, it just picks up and goes itself. And yeah, because it goes back and then you have to wait for it. Right. <laughs> you have to wait for it to go back again. And that's after they really start making the component sets yeah. or the quadraphonic sounds and stuff like that. Because before it, you couldn't carry the, the component sets because it was mixed with the television. Or oh, right. the, 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 the <laughs> so big and the size of the, the double couch that you couldn't bring that out. So you had to wait till when they started breaking it down. They had the speakers yeah. by itself on each side and all that. And they come with the quadraphonic sound where you could eat each instrument. In each speaker. So actually the, 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 the instrument of the turntable as we know it has been developed by what happened in this, this period. So you think about like how sound enforcement happened when the Beatles were doing 
stadium so big that they couldn't actually get their sound, get their sound across. The, the people creating turntables and DJ culture evolving or watching what you guys are creating and saying, okay, we need a, we need a crossfade switch here. We need this to go stop and start. We need the, it was all being developed basically based on hip hop culture. Oh, it was really mm -hmm. more being based on um, um, discotheque culture okay. first. You know, yeah. They the first DJs that came with on the two, 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 two turntables and the mixing board and all that because, you know, a lot of the club discotheque come from itself from France. Yeah. Uh, and then um, many other countries start picking up. We're going to the disco or the discotheque. Before it was just soul parties, R&B parties at the time. Yeah. And mostly it, you would have bands be playing before the DJ became popular. Only DJ that was popular is what you heard on the radio stations. Okay. And at that time we had people like Frankie Crocker, um, Gary Bird, and yeah, Eddie OJ, and Jocko, and, yeah. and Cousin Brucey from WABC. Yeah. When you, you know, go 40 odd years forward, what do you see and what do you, what's your impression of, of the turntablism? And like I said, the turntable now is almost officially accepted as a musical instrument, the same as a saxophone, the same as a guitar. It's being um, taught in schools now. How do you see that evolution from, from when you started with the turntable? It's definitely amazing and, and it's wonderful to see um, so many different fields and categories of DJs um, playing all styles of different music and to see how many people have became turntablists to do so many uh, fantastic tricks with the turntable, the needle or the vinyl or picking it up and making the, the, the record sound like a heavy metal guitar yeah. or taking certain sounds or grunts and playing that grunt and with James Brown making it uh, funky and just going back and forth with it or even to see certain we had DJs like Grammix DST and um, um, Master Ice from the UFO on yeah. UTFO who could jump on the turntable, flip and do a b-boy move and jump back and, and slice the mix with <laughs> the hand and be on point. Oh wow. And Mixmaster Ice did a, a DJ um, contest party where he even Slice and mix the mixer with his cheeks. He mix the mixer with his butt cheek. The foot, the, the crossfader. The crossfader. So, do I know why I did something? Why do I just do it? Say boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and everybody he, he won the thing after that because you know that was serious. Wow. Do something like that and, and to be on the one on the cube. Are you proud of, of, of like your um, your influence on on the hip hop culture and what you see, what you what you had, what you imagined back then? and what it became today? Are you well, proud I'm proud of on, on all the influence that we had dealing with not just hip hop, but all the different musical tastes, whether it was house, uh, electro, and techno, and all the other styles that was out there. To see all these different DJs playing all the music. The big amazement now is to see all these R&B or singers becoming DJs and rappers who are becoming DJs now today. Yeah, yeah. And you, you're happy with that? It's something that you... Well, it's getting crowded, but you know... It's getting crowded. You know, if you got the talent, you can do it. Go ahead and do it. Yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you for your time. I don't want to take too much more of your time, because we're going to do this too. Thank you, my brother. Peace. Peace. Yes, peace. Thank you.